What is up you guys? This is Ashi Senpai here today to review Hunter x Hunter 122. Yo, so, okay, so if you guys already seen it, you know, oh, you guys already heard it, uh, I've uploaded One Piece and Maki today, and tomorrow I'm gonna do the big three. So, well, let's go on to this review. So this review was, I would want to say, pretty damn good. It was, well, no, not the review, the episode, I'm sorry. The episode was pretty damn good, despite the fact that the fights weren't there yet. The fight will happen next week, but this week, not really that much of a fight. The reason why this episode was good is because the internal stuff is going on between the Chimera Ants and even their king. I find that weird, in the sense that it's like, wait, bro, um, like, it's just so intri- actually intriguing, it's actually pretty intriguing. So let's start with the, uh, basically the Miriam versus the Netero standoff. So, we see a change in the Chimera Ant King, Miriam, you know, that dude. And he basically, he's changing in a sense that he's becoming more human. Although Netero, um, says that his human and his Chimera Ants are like clashing. But he mentions how he now doesn't view humans as livestock. He mentions them how he views them as people, but it depends because he only views the weak, the people who can't defend themselves, and some other people who are close to his power as worthy, like people like Komugi, um, and then other people who are stronger, like Nero, I believe so. And he mentions how he's not going to treat every single human the same. He mentions how he's going to get rid of all the so-called kings in the world, become the true king, and become a more fair king. And of course, this all has to do with the fact that, you know, because he's a Chimera ant, he also has human DNA. So he's rapidly changing, rapidly evolving, kind of like a uh, Pichu and Poof. No, not Pichu and Poof, but Pichu and Niku. So when it comes to that, I thought it was awesome. When it comes to Netero's men ability, yo, that is hype. That is some serious hype. We see him use this Buddha statue kind of thing, and he's like, yeah, he's, a, he's like doing this martial arts thing. Excuse me. And of course, we saw that, I think it, we saw like, it's not a glimpse, but we saw a little bit of it in one other episode. We saw how Netero developed his uh, martial arts style, at that, uh, and then he came out to that dojo. But this time, we actually see what he can actually do. And he summons this huge Buddha statue kind of looking thing. So I think he's a conjurer. And like he's just using like he's using his hands to manipulate the um, Buddha, you know, like, like that. And it's pretty strong, but when he goes up against uh King Miriam, first of all, King Miriam isn't even fighting back. Like until the end of the episode, he isn't even doing anything. He actually says, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to wait for you. Can you come over here so we can talk, you know, talk this out? And of course, Netro's like, wait, what? And well, anyways, when it comes to the God's hand or the Buddha hand, it squashes uh, Miriam, but Miriam's able to get out of it. Like he, and he has a little bit of blood, but it's not even a lot. So when Cole mentioned how Netro had no chance of defeating the king, I was sitting there, I was like, wait a second. So, if Netero doesn't want to kill the king, why is he fighting? Like, is he it, like is he hiding back some kind of power that we don't know about? Or does he have a plan of some type? Like, because he knows that he can't defeat him. So it's like, uh, it's really weird. But, I will say this though, he did put in some work, I, I, I won't lie. So, let's talk about, uh, Yuki. Yuki... We see, not only has he progressed, but he's also shown to other people that he has progressed. He also shows it to, uh, uh, Poof. And Poof is worried, because Poof is like, yo, wait a second. Why is Yuki acting this way? Why is Yuki acting so mature, so calm? He even mentions, yo, Yuki, you've grown up, like, you've matured. And Poof actually gives him a test, and according to the narrator, it's a test Yuki's resolve. And he tests it by asking him, yo... Yuki, what do you think you should do? And Yuki, he notices what, I think he notices what uh, Poof is doing, and he's like, yo, I mean, it's, isn't it obvious? We go help off the king. Now, Poof is still looking at him like, yo, there's something up, but like, I don't like this at all. But still, you can tell that um, Yuki himself has evolved past his impatient form. So there's that. And 
they're going to go try and help out the king. Will the king want help? I doubt it, because of, even before, he said, like, no, like, you guys don't have to help me. I'm going to be there by myself. Just use your end and leave me alone. Will he, will he want them there now? It depends, and it all depends on which, like, how he's changing, because he is evolving when it comes to him being a human. But when it comes to him having human DNA. So that I thought was interesting. When it comes to Gone, P2, and Poof, here's how it works out. P2 explains to Poof why she's doing what she's doing. And Poof hears all this, but the narrator mentions how P2 doesn't mention everything that happened between the king and Komugi. She just mentions how, oh, the king wanted um, Komugi to be alive, the king wanted all of this, all of that. Poof understands this, of course, Poof, he, he uses his body split ability and he just sends out like a few flies to um, go figure out what's going on, go tell, go find uh, Yuki. But overall, he stays there like uh, Golem told him to. And when P2 tells the story of how what happened after the attack, the dragon dive attack, we see Golem's eyes waver a little bit. And of course, the narrator, I actually like the narrator a lot because he mentions a lot of things that I didn't catch. The narrator mentions how Golem's eyes wavered. Like, they were like, yo, like, the king said that? Even though he's still focused on, you know, getting his revenge, he notices how, okay, this is weird. Why is the king acting nice to a human? That's weird, because P2 didn't act that nice to Kai. So why is her king acting like that to a mere human? So Gon is, he's noticing this, and he's like, okay, I'll take this as a, like, with a grain of salt. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about Poof. So Poof at this point, it's obvious that he wants to kill Kumugui because Kumugui is getting involved with the king, and the king is like, oh, you know, I want to save this girl, and Poof is like, you don't do that. Kumugui is not important to you. You are the king. You are the high almighty. You are basically, yeah, the, well, not the Jesus, but yeah, kind of the Jesus of us. You are our savior. You're not supposed to go, bow down for a mere human. Help out a mere human. You are the king. You are superior to all. And he notices the changes between Poof, you know, between uh, Pitsu and Yupi, like, in, like I mentioned before. And it seems that not only is he just um, loyal to the king, it seems that he's the type of dude that will do anything he wants just to make sure the king is safe. It's not like Yupi in the sense that Yupi, he wants to help out the king, he does whatever he wants. But Yupi isn't devious anymore. Yupi, well, he's devious, but he's not as devious as he used to be. Yupi's more calm, he's more relaxed, and he actually gives respect to the other hunters. Pitu is now uh, much more uh, loyal to the king, but she's not devious at all. No matter what, she's going to protect Komugui. But Poof actually wants to kill Komugui because it's a hindrance to the king and how the king is when it comes to the Chimera Ants. So, what I can say is that Poof is a really interesting character. Out of all of them, Yupi is my favorite, but I will, uh, I will admit, Yupi, well, no, Poof, Poof is pretty damn interesting. And at the end of the episode, we see Miriam, and Miriam and Metro about to stand up. And what happens is that, in order to bait him into fighting him, Metro states, Yo, King, I know your real name. So, if you fight me, and you make sure I admit defeat, then I'll tell you what your real name is. This automatically hooks Miriam, because Miriam doesn't know that his name is Miriam. Miriam just thinks that, oh, I'm King, that's just pretty much it. So when he finds out that he actually has a name, that, that Metro knows, he's like, okay, if I hurt you and beat you without killing you, then I'll be good. And I like how he mentions Bunji in that, because he mentions how, like, all these, like, um, strategies, and then at the end, I thought that was badass, he says, I'm going to checkmate you, watch out. And then he gets into this fighting stance, and that's pretty much where the episode ends. So, the episode overall, the pacing was pretty good, it progressed uh, a little bit, it did progress. And the animation, when it came to the Buddha statue, was on point. Everything else was okay, it was, it was, it was alright, it was okay. So, I'm going to give this episode... 
I'm gonna give it a <clears throat> excuse me. I'm gonna give it a good plus rating. It was a good plus episode of Hunter x Hunter. So yeah, that's pretty much it, you guys. Like the video if you like it. Dislike it if you don't. And I'll see you guys later. Be sure to, of course, check out my big three reviews tomorrow. Chapter reviews. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm Arjun Senpai. Out. Peace.